Welcome back. Now, yesterday I mentioned that to live is Christ. To live is Christ. And uh, it just got me thinking about one of my favorite little verses and a quote from a book that I love as well about enjoying life. Um, sometimes we think we mustn't enjoy life too much as Christians. You know, that'd be a little bit over exuberant. Um, we're, we're supposed to be sort of very moderate and, uh, and, and not really throw ourselves into, into things too much. I don't quite think that's right. In uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, it says this, As for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches. Now you're thinking, okay, well, rich people there shouldn't be kind of like really smug and pleased with themselves because they've made it and they've 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 done it and they've got security because of their riches. So so teach them that. That's that's one thing. Uh, they should be, set their hopes on God, who get this richly provides us with everything to enjoy. Everything we have in our lives is there for us to enjoy. Motorcycles, plants, chickens, uh, cars, music, art, theatre. This is all there for us to enjoy. However, like the rich in this passage, we're not to, to set our hopes on that. We're not to feel any sense of security or contentment in those things or see those things themselves as, as what life is all about, about how to enjoy life. No, no. God has given those things to us to enjoy. And there's a good reason for this. And, and it reminds me of, of something that C.S. Lewis said in his book, Surprised by Joy. Kind of the, the, the wonderful things that we see and have are actually um, that there's there's a sense within them that the, that the Creator God has poured something good into them for us to enjoy, and so long as we see the goodness as coming from Him, mediated to us through these these things He's given to us to enjoy in life, and we say thank you, Lord, for the music, thank you, Lord, for the art, so that in everything, whether eating or drinking, we're doing so with with thanksgiving in our hearts to the Lord for those things. Let me just read you that quote now from, from C.S. Lewis in Surprised by Joy. It's a little bit long, uh, but stay with it because I think you'll get with him the sense that, yeah, it is, it's the stuff that comes through the good things that are there for us to enjoy. And let's not feel guilty about that so long as we recognize that God is behind them and we give him the honor and the glory for it. So C.S. Lewis says, all of your life, there's been an unattainable ecstasy just beyond the grasp of your consciousness. Though often on the verge of breaking through, you've never had it. All the things that have ever deeply possessed you or your soul have been but hints of it, tantalizing glimpses, promises never quite fulfilled. Echoes that died away just as they were caught in your ear. It's the secret signature of each soul. It's the incommunicable and unappeasable want. The thing we desire before we met our wives or made our friends. Or chose our work. And which we shall still desire on our deathbeds when the mind is no longer knowing wife or friend or work. The books or the music in which we thought the beauty was located will betray us if we trust them. That's the 1 Timothy 6.17 thing. If they are mistaken for the thing itself, they turn into dumb idols, breaking the hearts of the worshippers. For they are not the thing itself. They are only the scent of the flower. For we have not found the echo of a tune we have not heard. News from a country we've never visited. It's a music we are born remembering. The thing itself is not the great thing. It is the fact that God has given them to us. We enjoy them because God has given them to us to enjoy so let us think about the world, let's, especially in lockdown, when you know we may be thinking, "Oh man, I've I've watched a lot of Marvel films now, now that I've signed up to Disney Plus or to Netflix, or, or I've I've made a lot of progress 
uh, playing on my Xbox, or I've read through that massive stack of books, or my garden's never looked this good by the end of April. And we're thinking, maybe, maybe we're feeling a bit guilty about just enjoying those things. Well, don't. As long as you remember that the goodness that comes through them is a goodness that comes from God, and that you give thanks to the Lord for them, and remember that he's given you these things to enjoy. That's why they're there. It is true that, you know, things, good things in, in moderation are, are good, but, it, but, it, but it, to excess, yes, they will break you. Um, and that's C.S. Lewis's uh, warning there. They turn into dumb idols. That's the warning from, from T- uh, Paul writing to Timothy here about the rich in the church that he's, he's pastoring. You know, don't, just warn them not to trust too much in, in the money. Okay, they can enjoy it. It's been given there, you know, they've been given it uh, as something to enjoy, but but don't trust in it and don't feel smug about that. God has given it to you. Thank him for it. Use it wisely for his kingdom, for his glory's sake, and give him the praise and honour that he's due. So to live is Christ, as I said yesterday. Enjoy life. Enjoy what God is giving you. Just be thankful that, that God has given you some of these things day by day friends that you can ring up, things that you can do, music that you can listen to, good books you can read and enjoy. Praise the Lord for them. They're there for your enjoyment. Enjoy it in the right measure, for the right purpose, aimed in the right direction. Remember it's come from God. Don't turn it into a dumb idol. But give God the thanks and praise due to his name for all the good things. Because every good and perfect gift comes from our Father, the Father of the heavenly lights above. Give thanks in all things and remember the Lord. Amen.